Good evening, everyone. I'm Elizabeth Hansen, and this is KetoCon Fab. Uh, it's Wednesday evening. It's just after seven o'clock, and we're going to get started with our group. Um, this group is formed to help support people who are trying to follow a keto lifestyle, specifically with the teachings of Dr. Annette Bosworth. And um, none of us are perfect, and we all need support, and that's what we're here for. So, um, Let's see the report of the week. Uh, okay, for me, <laughs> um, sleep has been a problem this week. I haven't been getting very much of it. Um, I need to get more. <sighs> Just haven't figured out how. <laughs> and um, because I'm not getting as much sleep, the cravings for sugar are just crazy. Absolutely crazy. Um, and I, I've only given in a couple of times with little this, little that. Um, and I think one of the reasons that cravings also got bad was we went to a graduation party on Sunday and I, I skipped the cake because it was a boxed cake that got iced. And I'm like, you know, that's not worth the swelling that happens, you know, with any kind of wheat. But I had the ice cream and uh, the toppings for the ice cream. <laughs> and that of course causes swelling and everything. So, but other than that, you know, things have just pretty much been the same. How's everybody's week been? I'll start. Okay. Um, I haven't done very much different either. Um, I did the 36 hour from Sunday until Tuesday morning. Um, uh, the big, well, let me just finish. Um, I did the water walking. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I do my water walking, which is 30 minutes in the pool. And I do lots of, you know, like jumping jacks and, uh, bouncing up and down and, um, uh, frog kicks and things like that and hold on to the side of the, and try to, um, you know, get, waist exercises and things like that and then I do a 15 minute sauna at the YMCA and um, and then I go home and then I have to put a blanket around me because I'm chilled uh, it's also because my husband keeps the house pretty cold and but I think it's because my temperature actually comes down when I'm in the water for a half an hour like that the water is about 78 degrees they say and I think that, uh, so I think that there's a browning effect. You know, they talk about the browning effect when you jump into freezing cold water, turns the fat from white fat to brown fat, which is easier to burn off. So, and uh, actually over the last three weeks, I have lost seven pounds. So I think it's working. Um, my, my, I think, I have a girlfriend who, who was a Dr. Boz alumni who doesn't really follow Dr. Boz anymore because uh, she um, she has MS and uh, she just she says a lot of what Dr. Boz says doesn't work for her. So now she's in another group where they're doing she actually has a coach who's teaching her to eat lots and lots of fat like um she told me this week or last week she she had like on one day four pounds of pork belly four she said i did it in you know two two pounds in the morning and then at lunch i had another pound and then at night i was still hungry so i had another pound and um but she says she's losing weight with her thing, with her diet. So, um, so my problem, if I had a problem was, is that after I finished the 42, the 36 hour fast, I'm very uh, anxious to eat my meals. And I think I eat, I overeat. And if you've been listening to Dr. Boz at all, she's been talking about how when you get to the more progressed state, that you really should start thinking about 
bring the volume of your food down to something like, I think she said 800 grams a day. So break it up 400. She, she likes two meals within four hours. She, she's thinking that um, the more progressed people should be doing 20 hours fasting and four hours eating every day. And that all before like 4 p.m. So that's a lot of information. Um, I don't know how much you guys have been following Dr. Boz, but as of tomorrow, she's going to be teaching that brains course in Iowa. And uh, some of the other ladies have actually driven. One lady drove from um, upper New York State all the way to Iowa, which was a 17 hour one way drive. And uh, so they're all excited about, because the, the brains course that she's teaching in Iowa is actually free admission. You just have to pay for your hotel. So I don't know, that was, that's not worth driving to Iowa for me. <laughs> I'd rather find another way to take the brains course. <laughs> but the, the great thing is it's gonna be fresh. She's gonna be live. So it might, some people say that the, um, as a matter of fact, Wilma, aren't you going to it? Are you there? Are you there in Iowa? I'm in Iowa right now. There you are. So there you go. So I, I, I know that she's going to be fun because she's going to be live. And some people said that that brains course is a little dry at some, and she asked a whole bunch of questions and there's, it's just like lots of questions and it gets uh, overwhelming for older people. But um, I'm hoping that Wilma and the other you guys will have something to report that we'll all learn from. I know six people that are here. I haven't seen them yet. I just pulled in about an hour ago. Oh. Have yeah. you taken the course before? Yeah, I've done it online. Okay. I brought all my paperwork. Okay. So you are you feeling that uh, it's going to reinforce what you learn or it's going to be something new? I'm hoping she has some new content in it. But yeah, I Scott and I took the brain course online and we, we learned a lot from it and we, um, I mean, you know, we, we got what we paid for. We didn't like the format so much, you know, the here, watch this video and stop and then we'll talk and then watch this video and stop. And, and um, we just didn't like the format very much, but, you know, the thing is, is, well, we've, we've taught before we, we teach, you know, I teach classes, Scott teaches, and we felt that the way the, the splicing of this video and that video together wasn't seamless, it didn't flow very well, um, and that it would be much better in person. Um, and so kind of jealous, Wilma, but there's just no way we could travel to Iowa. Um, although we aren't that far from it. <laughs> um, but one, one thing I'm, I'm interested in, Wilma, if you, if you can, um, I'm still having a lot of trouble sleeping through the night. And I've made it actually a prayer request now that I just, um, that I, um, you know, sleep. I, I, I get more than six hours sleep. I get probably eight hours sleep but it's broken up. I wake up and I'm awake for about 10 minutes and then I finally go back to sleep again. So I, if there's any new tips about that, I'd love to hear that. Are you taking magnesium? Yes. I started taking two magnesium tablets before I go to bed about a half hour, an hour. And my deep sleep improved after I started that. Mm-hmm. I used to take magnesium in the morning and didn't get much deep sleep. So I moved it and I changed to magnesium something. Just a minute. 
Well, I feel like um, even though it's broken up, I feel like I'm getting oglycanate. Yeah. That's when I start taking it, I, my deep sleep improved drastically. Uh -huh. Great. Great. Yeah, there's there's many, many different types of magnesium, and I take two different kinds, one in the morning and then one in the evening. Um, the one in the morning is magnesium taurate, and um, that helps with blood pressure and um, brain function and memory, uh, you know, along with the other things that magnesium does. And then at night, I take magnesium phosphate. Um, which helps with muscle aches and pains and, um, and relaxation and stuff. So uh, I take two different kinds. Scott and my, one of my daughters takes a different kind. I'm trying to remember what kind you take. Do you remember, Scott, what it is? It doesn't matter really. But there's, but, you know, the thing is, is I do muscle testing for everyone in our family to find out which one is best um, for them to help with their particular problems. Our, our middle child who's autistic and lives with us, um, she takes a different kind of magnesium because one of her biggest problems is diarrhea. Uh, no, not diarrhea, constipation, the other mm -hmm. side. <laughs> um, and uh, so she takes a different kind of magnesium. And I have to recheck and retest people frequently because sometimes the needs of the body changes and we have to change magnesiums. So I know sometime last year I had to change Scott and our youngest girl to a different kind of magnesium. Their bodies were like not working. And Scott had been starting to get muscle cramps at night. And um, so then we changed it and he stopped getting the muscle cramps. So anyway uh, one more question Wilma did you say that you use the muse thing I haven't been using it much but I do use it for sleeping I do it before I go to bed to calm my brain down after it's going to, you know <laughs> and I, I have it for muse. I have the original one but not the one for sleeping and I liked it but it got sort of boring. That's sort of boring listening to the little birds chirping. <laughs> Take the bird chirping off. It's just nice to relax your brain and get it so it's not jumping around. Mm -hmm. That's what I use it for. I, I, I also use it at night. Yeah, Janet. I just, yeah, I just wanted to comment on the magnesium. I found a magnesium oil that I use to put on my feet and on my skin, like when I have cramps. Oh. And it works really good. In addition to, I take magnesium drops because the tablets didn't give me enough. Um, it wasn't concentrated enough. And the drops got in my system a lot quicker than the tablets over the course of the day. And it works pretty good for me. I got the, it's magnesium oil and I got, it's on um, Amazon. Uh, and that's where I got got mine. It works good. I spray it on my, the, particularly in the bottom of my feet and on my legs and skin. You spray it. Yeah, it's an oil and a and a bottle. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. And then it it spritzes. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Do yeah, you, it works do you know really what? Good. Do you know what kind of magnesium that is? Yeah. You know what? Hold on one minute. I'm gonna walk away and I'll get it. Okay. I'll come right back. Thanks, Janet. Um, if can I say one more thing before sure. uh, he comes back? Um, my husband has been trying to do keto for the last uh, few weeks, and he's lost some weight. But suddenly, he feels like he has um, blockage. He has uh, intestinal blockage, uh -uh. and he's spending a long time in the bathroom and hemorrhoids and he went to the doctor today and the doctor gave him a I don't know what some kind of thing to help his bowels move but um they're going to do one of those tests where you know well he has to do the colonoscopy again and then he has to do the one that goes through your mouth 
Oh, but the thing. The, the bad thing is he he's blaming it on Dr. Boz. Oh. And, and the thing of it is he's not he's not 100% compliant. He um, you know, he'll have you know, a nice steak at lunch or salmon and then at night he'll have some cheese and crackers oh. which i say the crackers is what's binding up your intestines you know but anyway i'll let the doctor but the the bad thing is that he's now bad mouthing dr boz well so anyway, hmm. anyway well, don't don't give me any advice i I won't be able to change his mind. No, no, no. But <laughs> I, I think you're on the right path, Patricia, because when when I do cheat with anything wheat, um, I notice that I'll skip a day uh, and then it will be a little harder to evacuate. <laughs> Let's say it that way. Um, or if I go crazy on cheese, you know, because I... I love cheese, and if I go a little crazy on the cheese, I might skip a day and have a little harder time. Um, but see, that's because I've decided not to follow the program completely because I shouldn't have wheat at all on keto, or, and you shouldn't go crazy on cheese. You can have cheese, but just don't go crazy. Um, so I think you're right. I think um, his crackers and cheese are causing a trouble. And, um, but you're also right. He's an adult and he can choose to do with himself what he wants. And um, it's, it's just tough. It's just tough. I get it. So Janet, did you find your stuff? Yes, yes. yes. It says the ingredients is liquid magnesium chloride purified water, organic cold pressed whole leaf aloe vera. Um, and, and this is, uh, where am I at here? Um, this is the bottle that it comes in. Okay. I'll have to look yeah. that up on Amazon. Yeah, uh, and, it works good. And okay. the aloe vera, I, I thought I did a little research and without the aloe vera oil, it's a little rough when it lands on your skin. But the aloe vera oil makes it a lot smoother when it mm -hmm. hits the skin. So it, mm -hmm. it's, it's very comfortable. I use that at night and uh, in the morning too. Okay. I'll, I'll look that up on Amazon and I'll put it in the links uh, on the video here so other oh. people will be able to find it. Now, the, the magnesium drops you take, are they a homeopathic magnesium drop or are they just liquid magnesium or? You know, um, I don't know about that either. I have to go and get that. Too. Oh, <laughs> did you get that from Amazon as well? No, I got that from... And I hate to mention her name, but I really like her, but I don't follow her because, wait, wait, Dr. Mindy has a site that she refers. Oh, okay. She, you know, she's good for people, for a different group of people than myself. Dr. Boz is good for me because I have a lot of health issues. But if yeah. I was younger and I was healthier, then I probably would lean in that direction more. So, yeah. uh, but at the time when I was looking through, trying to decide what was for me and I was going to everybody. She came up and I followed her a little bit, but it just didn't sustain or put me in a uh, position to heal and yeah. autophagy enough. It just wasn't enough for me. But that's yeah. where I got the drop of magnesium, the drop of potassium, um, which I put that in, the, in my water also to, because with the comma meter, I hope I'm pronouncing it right. It tell, I like it because it shows me the food I eat, what I'm lacking, and the potassium and the magnesium. So even though I had this meal plan, I still fall really short on those minerals. Mm -hmm. So that's why I got to supplement the liquid so I'll know how many drops. And I put that right in the quantum meter because it's also in there and it shows the potassium so I can at least be within range. Mm -hmm. So that's why I chose the drops. They do have the tablets too and the quantum meter and the, uh, to add food. Because uh, what I did, I created a, a, a menu list that, cr that has all my vitamins in it. I created the food list. It has only my vitamins. 
so I can go on daily and put vitamins and minerals and put the, it goes right, pops right into my day. Then I can look at the bottom to see how many minerals I'm eating and how many minerals I'm supplementing. So I'm still in the same frame of where I need mm-hmm. to be. Yeah, that's one of the great things about chronometer. And one of the reasons I like it, um, mm-hmm. I had signed up to do an app called Lose It. Oh. Um, and they they didn't have um, the ability to put in your supplements and you could put in your food, but they did not do the um, the minerals and stuff. They were only looking at calories and fat and carbs and and everything. And I hear what you're saying about Dr. Mindy. Um, I haven't personally followed her much. I think I've watched like one or two of her videos. Um, but, um, I have, I have a good friend who wanted to lose some weight and, um, she found something called Christy code red with a a lady named Christy who used to be a lady boxer and she had gained a lot of weight and she found this way to lose weight. And, um, so my friend was doing this system, this Christy code red thing. And I kept telling her, I said, that sounds like keto. Oh, she says, if you say the word keto around Christy, or you put it in a post on Facebook or Instagram or whatever, she just goes ballistic. This is not keto. This is code red. And um, so my, my friend gave me the code red book and I read it and it, you know, to be honest with you, it's keto. And she just doesn't want to be called keto because a lot of people, when you say the word keto, they turn off. They're like, oh, keto. I tried that. It was terrible. I felt like crap, blah, 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 you know. Um, But she, uh, this Christy Code Red person, she's enthusiastic. She's tough. She's like, you're not going to change. You're not going to lose the weight. You're not going to feel better if you don't do the program. And don't, don't cry to me because you've eaten an apple and, and three strawberries and you gained weight, you know, and, and blah, blah, blah. And um, she doesn't test blood for blood sugars or autophagy or anything like that. And she doesn't talk about any of the body chemistry and stuff that's going on. She's just lose the weight, lose the weight. And, but she, she says exactly like what Dr. Boz says um, about exercise at first. Don't overdo the exercise, just, you know, regular activities until you're really in a good rhythm and on, on keto well and, um, and everything. And she doesn't suggest people do any kind of intermittent fasting for at least six to eight weeks, very much like Dr. Boz and um and everything but boy the the lady christy code red goes cuckoo um but her program is a keto program and um so you know most of you know that i i work with our clients in natural health and many of them want to lose weight many of them want to do better with their diet and if they have all sorts of health problems like i've had then I will suggest they follow Dr. Boz. But if they're just healthy people who eat junk, <laughs> you know, um, I, I suggest the Code Red program because most people, you know, don't want to hear the word keto, you know. In fact, <laughs> this last weekend, I, I went to a graduation with a friend and um, my friend's a little bit younger than me. Uh, and um, her son, her youngest son was graduating and she has a daughter getting married in October. And she's watched me lose weight and, and get slimmer and healthier. And she's like, oh, I need to do that before the wedding and blah, 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 blah. And so I talked to her about both Code Red and um, Dr. Boz because her, her weight isn't causing that much of a problem, but she does have some problems. And she's like, oh, keto, I'm going to do keto. So here's the way she's done keto. She skips breakfast because aren't you supposed to fast in the morning? And then she has um, 
you know, some sort of salad with a meat in it for her lunch. And then the rest of the day, she sucks on or chews on keto snacks or keto this or keto that, you know, all sorts of products from like keto chow and um, uh, healthy keto and, and, and stuff. And then at supper, she makes a regular supper with carbs with her family. And, and she, when I saw her this weekend for the graduation, she has not lost any weight. She has gained weight. And I had to repeat to her, you cannot have it both ways. Either you are keto or you are not keto. You can't have it both ways. And I said, eating all this keto chow and, and everything, yes, it's better than you eating non-keto chow and stuff. But you, the better thing for you to do would just to just go on the program. Give up carbs. Give them up and do the program. And she's like, oh, it's so hard. This is my family. And I'm like, you know what? Your, all your family would be healthier. She has a husband with diabetes. He'd do better if he was keto, you know? And her, the daughter that's getting married, um, she has POTS. Um, do you know what POTS is? It's a, it's a heart thing. Um, uh, osteo, physiologic osteostatic. Uh, I can't remember what it means. But anyway, it, it causes heart rate um, issues and arrhythmias and fatigue. And um, she can stand up and pass out um, because her heart stops beating and she'll just pass out and stuff. Um, and, you know, but you can't, you can't force people, right, Patricia? <laughs> no, you know, one of the things I was reading in the book um, with Dr. Boz who was working, I think his name is David. And uh -huh. in the beginning, that kind of, I kind of remember, you know, all she told him to do was, to, to cut the carbs, watch yeah. your carbs and what you're eating. And sometimes it takes just that first step, you know, mm -hmm. versus, it can be overwhelming and it is overwhelming, but, mm -hmm. you know, just to be able to look at what you eat, write down, go ahead and eat what you want, but write down what it is. And then once you get them to write down, then you can start to calculate and they can see mm -hmm. what they have, how many, and then maybe cut that back or gradually. So, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes that, you know, I like that approach that she did with David in the book, because mm -hmm. she couldn't just throw it on him at one time. She gradually walked through it with him and just gave him some key things to look out for to track, you know, and that was easy for him. He wasn't overwhelmed. He ate what he wanted, but he wrote it down, you know, and sometimes that's just the beginning. Yeah, usually with my clients, what I ask them to do, I said, I don't want you to do anything. Don't read anything about keto. Don't do anything about keto. All I want you to do is write down your food. Just write down your food. Just write it down. And the next time I see you, we'll talk about it. And so then, you know, when they come back with the, a food diary for at least a week, then I'll, I'll tell them, okay, this is how much protein you're getting, you know, because I'll plug it into my chronometer and stuff. And so then I said, so here's where we could cut, you know, don't have your toast with your eggs in the morning. You know, I have a question though. Why didn't you do that with the lady that you were just talking about? Who, because why? I've already, because I've already told her about chronometer oh. and, and she's, she's decided, no, no, this is the way I want to oh. do it. Oh, oh, okay. I understand yeah. now. Oh, okay. yeah. I already told her that, but Yeah. Sometimes people listen and sometimes they don't. And that's okay because we're all individuals and we have a right to do what we want and suffer the consequences or be blessed by them, whatever. And, and you know, so many people that I work with are in the 300 club, you know, they're eating 300 carbs a day or more, you know. Well, come on, you, you add it up. They have a donut and some toast for breakfast, you know, that's a lot. <laughs> and, and maybe some hash browns too, you know, along with their eggs and bacon. And then at lunchtime, they'll have a sub, a foot long 
who how much bread is that you know and they have a soda and they have a couple of cookies and oh they want to be healthy so they're going to have some grapes yeah as well all of its carbs and then at supper, they have a baked potato because that's healthy. And then they have some sort of vegetable and a salad and their, their hamburger on a bun. How, how many carbs do you have about a day? Me? <laughs> mm -hmm. On a good day, I'm staying right between 20 and 30. On a, oh, day, okay. on a day like I eat ice cream or something, I could get up to 100. You know, I tried... Um... Well, I kind of went, I went from Dr. Bob's to Atkins, thinking okay. that I could balance the carbs. I got, mm -hmm. so I tracked them and I got to like 150. Before I did that, my asthma was gone. The swelling in my wrist and my ankles were gone. My asthma, I could breathe better. I, my mind was clear. I could think clear. I was a lot more patient. Mm -hmm. As I increased those carbs, my asthma came back. It was hard to breathe. My ankles start swelling. My wrists start swelling. My husband's like, you need to go back on keto because I can't take you anymore. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, um, and, and so what I did, but you know what, what really got me? The carbs that I went up, that I used were like sweet potatoes and corn and kidney beans and things that I love. Just, but mm. just that brought all that inflammation back on me again. So, um, of course, I'm back on now. Um, I'm, I, I am fat adapted. I did a 72-hour fast that I just completed today. I had, oh, go you. Uh, yeah, ketones of 6.6. .6. That's the highest wow. I've ever seen in my whole life. I was wow. just poor. The 72 hours was a breeze. It was like, this is great. But what great. I did was I used ketones in a can. And I added them to a bottle of water and I just sipped on that throughout my day. And I seen how they rose up and down. But, um, you know, I would love to be able to get my carbs where I can eat what I want and, and that no choices of food and not trigger the inflammation, you know. Mm -hmm. But what I understand is once I get to my body weight, because as long as I'm over my body weight, my body is constantly fighting inflammation because of where my weight is. But once I get down to my goal weight, you know, that opens up a little more, a bit of a window for me. So I'm looking forward to that. I met a lady the other night on one of the groups who was at her goal weight and she was, she enjoyed some food and then went right back on and it didn't affect her blood sugar, you know, at all. Of course, she didn't eat a lot of them, but she had enough that she enjoyed it, but enough, not enough to overdo it, but she was at her goal weight. And so her body was metabolic adaptable. I think, is that the term that they use? I think, um, you I, think I think so. The thing is, is that I know with myself, mm -hmm. um, my issue is the insulin resistance. And um, so... Uh, yes, I'm still over my eventual goal rate, but I don't know if my body's ever going to stop being insulin resistant. I mean, I've been insulin resistant for probably most, if not all of my life, 60 years. And I'm not sure if I'll ever get out of insulin resistance. Um, if I happen to eat rice, um, I if I happen to eat rice or like a rice cake or, you know, like one of those um, rice crispy bars, um, my, my insulin, my blood sugar goes up crazy, even more than it does with ice cream. My blood sugar doesn't go up as high with ice cream, even with all the sugar in it, as it does with like a bowl of rice with butter on it and salt. And um, it's just how my particular body reacts to it. And it's my brand, my personal brand of insulin resistance. And I, I think every single one of us are a unique metabolism, uh, a unique species, a unique person. And um, we, we have to learn our our metabolism and what we can and can't do. And I'm with you, Janet. I mean, I would love to have some sweet potatoes 
or or some kidney beans. Oh man, there's a kidney bean soup that my grandmother used to make, and she'd put bits of, of collard, not collard, beet greens, beet greens in it, and it was it was butter and beans and the beet greens and some onion and some garlic. Oh, that's delicious, but it's so carby because of the beans, you know, can't do it. Can't do the beans, can't do rice. I love rice. Um, I've lived in Japan nearly four years of my life and I love rice, <laughs> um, but I can't do rice. And that's the insulin resistance. And every time I eat ice cream or I eat chips or, or I eat rice or whatever, I increase or re, um, what do you call it? Re, I, shoot. Trigger, trigger. I, I, well, no. No, it doesn't I knock you out of keto. I reinforce my insulin resistance with my body the body's like yeah that's what i'm talking about yeah so you that know. means it kicks you out of ketones you have none yep that, yep okay. it kicks me right out of ketosis and and i don't have any um the nice thing is is i was able to bring my my insulin fasting insulin number down um and uh everything but every time i eat something i shouldn't i'm sure it just spikes right back up there because that's what my body's been used to for 60 years you know so yeah hey tammy oh you're okay yeah. there you go how's tammy well i've kind of i got a bake i got a restaurant down the street that makes keto desserts along with keto stuff and I've been eating too many of those oh. so today I'm not eating anymore and I'm done buying them I'll buy them I'll buy she makes dinners too you know regular food but she makes all these truffles that are so good they just like melt in your mouth chocolate and they, they're keto but you know and my problem is not eating non-keto foods it's just eating too much keto foods you know like keto desserts um or you know cheese or peanuts are my downfall so I'm not buying any more peanuts and no more desserts from the place down the street so I got to get back on track because you know I've gained maybe five or eight pounds in the last uh six months or so, so yeah I don't want to gain 40 so I better stop but I'm not getting on the scale because I'm afraid of the number so that's bad too <laughs> uh -huh. so anyway just um just move moseying right along moseying right along now, Tammy, did you take the brains class? I can't remember. I did not, and I'm really not interested in it at this time. Yeah, I wasn't sure if you had. I know Patricia hadn't taken it last I checked. Um, and but it is it is interesting. Um, there was someone I was listening. Oh, yeah, that's that thing that I'm still studying about that I want to talk to you all about sometime. Oh. I found out I'll, I'll just mention it slightly. Um, I started listening to a Dr. Hayward, and um, he is a doctor who works with infectious diseases. And he originally was working with individuals who had Lyme disease and researching Lyme disease and finding out how Lyme disease affects the brain. And then he figured out that um, it's not just Lyme, but there's um, molds and um, other tick-borne uh, and mosquito-borne illnesses that can cause long-term chronic inflammation in the brain and the rest of the body. And, um, you know, Dr. Boz uh, talks about inflammation a great deal in all of her keto stuff, um, but in the brain stuff, she talks about inflammation in the brain specifically um, with drinking alcohol and eating carbs and smoking marijuana and, and all of that. And so what this doctor does is he has a, a protocol to try and clear this deep tissue, chronic inflammation in all of the body plus the brain um, with this protocol. And um, he has a diet and he calls it something with an A, an alleric, 
diet or something or another, but it's basically keto. <laughs> um, and um, so I'm, I'm researching more of it for one of my clients. Um, and, uh, but it's very interesting. And a lot of what he says, you know, reminds me of things that Dr. Boz says, uh, and uh, specifically about the brain inflammation and, and how, you know, just what we eat can cause inflammation in our brains, not just our wrists or our ankles or our backs or, or something, but it can actually cause brain inflammation and start uh, things like MS and Parkinson's and, um, and Alzheimer's and other things like that. So I'm, I'm still watching a, a series of videos and I just received the book um, about it today in the mail. And so I have to, i um, digging it out. I just received the book today. Um, he, he works with several other um, doctors who they put this all together and it's called CIRS, Chronic Inflammatory Response Syndrome. And, um, and it's, it's, it's pretty interesting. So I'm doing more research on that, but I'm like, well, I'm, I'm glad I'm doing keto already because, um, you know, the diet they suggest is, is very keto-like. And um, so anyway. I, I started uh, the brain course. Uh, actually, I'm in the second week with, uh, with Tammy. She's teaching it. Um, okay along with Dr. Boss, I think it was like $125 for the whole yeah. course. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm looking forward to hearing more about that. Yeah. I wonder if Dr. Boss is going to redo her online class with, with this in-person class. Wilma, do you know anything about that? No, I don't. Um... On Tuesday night's talk, she talked a little bit about Pella, but didn't say, this is the first time she's done it live since 2019. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, and if she does update the, the brain class with this new one that you're going to attend, Wilma, I, I might decide to take it a second time. I know I still have access to the brain. I can rewatch it anytime I want in whatever order I want and, and everything. I know that. But if she does update it, I think I might want to take it again. So Wilma, you'll, you'll have to take notes and let me know if she's added new stuff and if it would be worth, you know, taking it again. I was hoping to be able to go through the course before we start tomorrow, but I've been too busy, so I haven't gotten into the course to remind myself of what was in it. It's been mm -hmm. a couple of years since I went through it. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, I think I think Scott and I did that back in January, February this year. Yeah, it was it was cold outside, a lot of ice and snow. So yeah, that probably was it. <laughs> and um, and I I've been back to look for some other information um, once or twice, but other than that, I haven't redone it. But I made a notebook out of all of my notes and and the printouts and and everything, and I have looked at those. Um, but other than that, I haven't. But uh, anyway, so. Um, before I depart here, it's getting close to nine o'clock my time. I did want to report one more thing. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to teach myself piano now. Ooh. I found a course called Piano by Pictures. And uh, there's, it's basically you, you play the melody with your right hand and you play chords with your left hand. Okay. And, um, you know, I have the fear of Alzheimer in my future. And uh, I never, I've always been frustrated that I never learned a, a, an instrument. So wish me luck. I'll give you a report in about a month. 
<laughs> okay, that sounds interesting. I, I've thought about refreshing my Spanish because um, I, I lived in Spain for a year and went to college there and my 40th reunion with my class in Spain is coming up in a couple of years and they want to do a reunion in Spain. But right now, Spain only allows people who have been fully vaccinated to fly. So unless they drop that, I'm not going to Spain. But I'm like, you know what, I should refresh my Spanish because I don't get much practice with my Spanish here in North Dakota. <laughs> you know, um, we don't have that diverse a population. And if you do hear a foreign language, it could be Ojibwa, which is one of the Native American languages here, or Mete, um, or it could be French because we're right here on the border with Canada and they teach French and there are French people. So, but I, um, I don't get much of a chance. <laughs> Usually it's when I'm trying to tell my husband something I don't want the children to know. Um, because they don't speak Spanish, but he does, and so do I. And um, so I've been thinking of um, getting an app on my phone to up my Spanish again. But that's good, Patricia. Using your brain, uh, you know, like they say, doing crossword puzzles or Sudoku, um, working with numbers each day. You know, you get an old math book and you work... Um, with numbers and stuff will help keep the brain. But, you know, I've heard a lot of things about teaching children instruments to help their brains develop. Um, and so, yeah. Well, it's just a minute or two before eight o'clock. If nobody else has anything they want to ask or talk about, we can go ahead and close out this meeting and um, everything. Scott, anything on your mind? Well, I just like to mention that um, I, I think I mentioned maybe a week or two ago that you know this summer I'm going to be teaching an anatomy and physiology course um, at the college here, and uh, so I've got six students. Um, and um, so this week we we went over the, um, the the chapter that's that goes over basic chemistry and stuff, and so you know it goes over. Um, it also you know mentions just the briefly the basic characteristics of carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. And so in the carbohydrate section that I, I, uh, I spent about 15, 20 minutes then talking about the fact that our diet has way too many carbohydrates in it and, and the effects of that and, and how it, it takes a lot of water to actually keep glucose in, in, uh, in solution and stuff. And so, um, uh, but I didn't have too many questions, but the thing is, unfortunately, this is kind of a quiet group of students that are not asking questions. So, so I really don't know if I made any impression at all. <laughs> but anyway, I, I gave them the spiel and, and so there you go. <laughs> well, anytime you can bring it up again. Uh, the thing is, yeah. is all of our lives, we were taught the food pyramid, at least I was, you know, and it, it has that bottom where it's 10 to 12 servings of, of grains yeah, and, I brought up the food pyramid and 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 I, and I also said that you know i know that that currently it's the my plate thing you know uh -huh. and and you know actually um just a few minutes ago actually just before the the meeting here today i i i looked up i tried to look up the usda guidelines and it's really hard to find like the simple graphic you know or or a simple explanation of it they it's it's weird. You go onto the USDA site and and it's really hard to find uh, an, an explanation of it. I'll have to um, ask our our local county extension agent. <clears throat> Maybe she has a a better presentation of it. You know, but but um, yeah, it's it's uh, uh, it's it's weird. But anyway, yeah, you know. So they they yeah the the, the grains and whatever they call it, I forget what they call it, but, you know, the, the grains group. And, and I pointed out that, yeah, the, the, the you know, grains group is, is totally carbohydrate. But the thing is, you know, they've got, they've got your fruit group and your vegetable group and, and fruit is pretty much all carb anyway. And most vegetables have way too much carb. Uh, and so, you know, the, <laughs> um, but, you know, the thing is a lot of, well, 
pretty much any diet around the world is going to have too much carb. But I, I think our American diet especially has way too much carb because there's high fructose corn syrup that's in um, all sorts of different foods and stuff. Uh, and so probably if you, you know, it'd be interesting to do a study, but probably if you look at, you know, the, the, the average uh, amount of carb that an American takes in in a day, it would be a lot more than, you know, your average Mexican or Indian or Chinese, Japanese, you know, uh, French, you know, whoever, whoever, wherever around the world. It would be kind of interesting to do a correlation between, you know, the average daily intake uh, of carbohydrate correlated with the, the uh, diabetes, well, the diabetes and or obesity uh, uh, proportion, you know, percentage of the population around the world. Well, the interesting thing, you know, Patricia's lived in Europe and I lived in Europe before and the amount of bread the Europeans eat. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's such delicious right. bread, though, and potatoes, lots of potatoes. And I lived on the coast in Spain and the, the coastal areas of Spain eat a lot of rice and um, with their seafood and stuff. The, the mountain areas of Spain eat more potatoes and potato things. Not that they don't eat rice or potatoes in the other places, but it's it's a regional thing. And wasn't that the way it was in Germany, um, Patricia? Did they eat a lot of potatoes in Germany? I mean, hot potato salad and everything. S sauerkraut is the one of the main things. I mean, mm -hmm. they eat a lot of sauerkraut. I mean, I knew one guy... He said, if you get hungry, just open up a can. Just eat it right out of the can. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, I was interested that the German restaurant we went to when we were on vacation, they had red cabbage and then they had sauerkraut and then they had some sort of um, German noodle and then the meat on the plate. And that, that was your plate. And if you didn't want the noodles, they substituted the German potato salad. And, but that was a lot of cabbage, the red cabbage and the, and the um, sauerkraut. That was a lot of cabbage on one plate. I mean, I don't think any American would ever think of eating that much cabbage at one time, but it was delicious. And, um, uh, but yeah, I mean, so yeah, we, the problem with us Americans is we eat all sorts of crap carbs, you know, <laughs> our breads are so full of, of sugar. Um, the bread in Spain and Portugal, oh, that stuff was so delicious. And yes, it had some sugar in it, but it wasn't nearly of the amount of sugar that we put in our sliced breads and our hamburger buns and our hot dog buns and and everything um like we do here so it would be very interesting and i think there is a doctor was wasn't it that um dr jung that compares diets around the world um he wrote the book <sighs> Okay, I can't remember it, whatever. I'll figure it out by next week um, and we'll talk about that. But um, we're, we should go ahead and close out and um, everybody have a good rest of the night. Have a good time, Wilma. We'll be about you. Yeah, we, we want to report next week. <laughs> okay. All right. Good night, everyone. <laughs>